Registered Phenomena Code 666 Object Class Gamma Purple Hazard Types Aggression Hazard Ballistic Hazard Mechanical Hazard Regenerative Hazard Sapient Hazard Extreme Temperature Hazard Explosive Hazard Containment Protocols Due to the remote and erratic nature of its manifestations, RPC-666 is currently uncontained. Peacekeeping forces and high-conflict African missions, with the approval of UNAAC, will be seated with authority personnel to concentrate the response to an RPC-666 manifestation. A joint monitoring initiative has been formed between the ASF, Nigerian DIA, South African SSA, and the PCAAO. A contingent of MST Zulu-45 backwater filter and the PCAAO Sand Serpent Commando Unit have formed a rapid response force to neutralize RPC-666, with limited success to date. Outstanding Neutralization Order May 14, 1987 to present Authority ASF AFRICOM Director Debits Current Focus Boko Haram Conflict, Nigeria Libyan Civil War South Sudan Conflict Description: RPC-666 is an anomalous Mi-24 NATO Hind A helicopter gunship, the earliest variant of many manufactured by the Soviet Union and Russia. RPC-666 is most readily distinguishable from a standard Mi-24 by the dried blood encrusting most of its fuselage and the bodies hung by electrical wire from its landing gear and weapons hardpoints. These bodies while otherwise non-anomalous, vary in number during manifestations from 4 to 17. A few of the recovered bodies, separated from RPC-666 by weapons fire, have been identified as previous victims of RPC-666 manifestations. The only certain criteria for an RPC-666 manifestation is that it occurs in the midst of an armed conflict on the African continent. During these events, RPC-666 will attack a concentration of civilians, typically a village, evacuation convoy, or refugee camp, with rocket and gun armament standards to early Mi-24 variants. RPC-666 reloads its rocket pod by unknown means between manifestations. After it runs out of rockets during an attack, RPC-666 will switch to its nose-mounted Afanasiv A-12.7 machine gun. This weapon has not been observed to have run out of ammunition on any occasion. RPC-666 also instigates clearly anomalous phenomena during attacks. The air temperature of the target area drops to an extreme of negative 2 degrees Celsius or negative 28 degrees Fahrenheit immediately prior to a manifestation, gradually rising to 49 to 67 degrees Celsius, 120 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of particularly lengthy attacks. Additionally, if RPC-666 inflicts casualties in excess of during an attack, a light rain will begin to fall. The water, when collected, has been found to be brackish and at boiling temperatures. A relevant excerpt from a French peacekeeper's unpublished memoir has been provided by UNAAC to demonstrate a typical RPC-666 manifestation. This place is madness, the heart of darkness, but the riverbed is dry, and the skies and dirt are red with atrocity. I can't believe my own memory. I pray that writing this all down will still my conscience. I don't want to end like Leclerc or Morgenthau. God, I can hardly write straight. This is what happened. The village at… is where I'm taken back to every night. The rebels were a few miles away and the government was launching haphazard airstrikes. Our tiny force could only watch the refugees pour in, and help as best we could. We agreed to fight the rebels when they came, not as peacekeepers under emasculating regulations, but as men and as soldiers. It would have been a fine death. It was not meant to be. The temperature dropped, frost forming on windows, like winter back in France. We were confused. The Africans were in near panic. They had never felt this cold before. The village was in an uproar, children crying, some of the villagers and refugees nearly coming to blows, then hell appeared in the sky. A Soviet attack chopper, 
bloody and dangling a dozen corpses in its wake, strung up in rebel fashion, like a visage from the modern inferno. We were instructed on air attack back in France, of course. We had seen government helicopters attack targets, felt the ground shake. No description does the real thing justice. The absolute, soul-shaking helplessness. Dirt and blood and flesh showering down as you hug the ground. The terror of rockets shrieking. The terror of the thing itself shrieking, keening and wailing above the bedlam of the village. Once the rockets were spent, it hunted with bursts from its nose gun. Thump, thump, thump across the fields. Francis is a braver man than I. He wielded a 12.7 on our vehicle, firing until the helicopter tore him apart. Lewis was killed by shrapnel. I don't know how many Africans died. It worsened. The air then grew hot, swelteringly hot. In the circumstances, it felt like suffocation, burning my lungs as I hid in the grass with Leclerc. Then the rain began, pattering down, scalding to the touch. The shrieking from the mutilated wounded redoubled, until the helicopter disappeared and the air cooled. I was convinced I had died and was in hell, doomed to stew in shame and terror and rage, choking on the hot dust raised by the helicopter, all to the end of time. I heard they'll say Francis and Lewis were killed in a rebel ambush. Doubtless they cannot believe the lurid stories of the survivors. How can you distinguish them from the exaggerated tales of any other helicopter assault? I think that's the part that most horrifies me. This ghastly hell-spawn slaughter and really? Who will care? I am convinced that beastly machine was not a government helicopter. But what does it matter? They've massacred a half-dozen settlements in the province, if left thoroughly. And the rebels behead fathers in front of their sons. I've seen that too. Only forced out my nightmares by the helicopter. As acute as that horror was, it's just a drop in the bucket of gore, like a hellish manifestation of all the senseless cruelty, still shadowed by the scale of the violence here. How can I return to the streets of Ivry and go back to the bakery? It won't be for some time. The rebels are blaming the government. The death of my peacekeepers is blamed on the rebels. I think the devil wants the bloodshed to continue, the drop that caused the bucket to overflow. The origin of RPC-666 is difficult to trace, as examples of conventional MI-24s attacking civilian targets during African conflicts number in the hundreds. There are even several recorded instances of corpses being hung from the helicopters by non-anomalous militias. The only unmistakable characteristic of an RPC-666 manifestation its temperature and weather phenomena is often lost in emotional and sensationalized accounts of conventional attacks. An example of a genuine account of an RPC-666 manifestation is available below. Note the references to temperature fluctuations and clouds seeded to produce boiling rain. Excerpts from a journal discovered in a store of confiscated items on the Gideon-Liberian border. I think the devil has descended on the valley or else the government's air force. I barely have my life and little Nora, my beloved and my poor blind father are gone. I dare not go back. It was so cold, the children were wailing before it arrived, breathing fire and horror and screaming over the burning village. I held Nora close under a collapsed roof, watching the beastly machine scour the maze and shoot anyone who fled into pieces. The air was boiling hot like a cauldron in hell by then, and when Nora stopped crying and went still, I started running with her in my arms, hoping she would die fast, God forgive me. The refugees from the south, the ones I had complained about squatting near the well, they saved my life, and little Nora's. Blood for blood under the devil's gaze. They ran from their tents and drew away the beast, and we escaped into the west hills. I cooled her off in a watering hole and wept when she opened her eyes again. I'm taking her over the border. I love this land, the land of my ancestors back in the beginning of time. But there is a taint, black and uglier than the passing militias. The devil's shadow stalks like a hunter, hanging its victims as trophies and seeding the clouds to a boil. There are already rumors that the refugee camp at Lake Dubaki was attacked. We passed some shattered military vehicles on the road. They must have failed to stop the beast. The peace deal they were talking about must be just as failed and broken right now. Nora's smile is the only thing that proves to me I have not passed into hell and descended to some nightmare. 
and that smile is now so faint. I must get her to the border. I will write again tomorrow. Neutralization Status As of May 14, 1987, following several failed containment attempts by the ASF, a neutralized order was approved for RPC-666. The neutralization order continues to the day, under the following justifications. Massive loss of life directly caused by RPC-666. Political instability and peace spoiling caused by RPC-666 attacks. Apparently indefinite pattern of attacks. Extreme difficulty of suppressing or halting the slaughter. Compounded difficulty of restraining and capturing RPC-666 for further study. Strained AFRICOM resources, especially in red-purple field containment. July 9, 2004 Following a previous decade of unsuccessful neutralization attempts, all owing to the limited firepower immediately available in remote African locations, a PCAAO Chengdu F-7 successfully hits RPC-666 with an air-to-air -air missile. Grievously wounded yet still flying, RPC-666 is pursued by Authority ground assets for several miles. Temperatures drop to a recorded negative 31 degrees Celsius, negative 24 degrees Fahrenheit, eventually halting Authority vehicles and allowing RPC-666 to escape. MST Zulu-45 backwater filter has adjusted its tactics as a result of this engagement. Additionally, the contingent has upgraded their first response vehicles to Arctic Standard. July 9, 2004 Media Link to declassified footage of the engagement, collated from two Authority camcorders, shared Chinese video, and an unaffiliated journalist detained the next day. September 23, 2009 Zero RPC manifestations are reported in the next three years. A possible RPC-666 manifestation occurs during the Second Tuareg Rebellion in 2007, with the first confirmed sighting in 2009 during the onset of the Boko Haram insurgency. Neutralization efforts continue. January 14, 2010 High-quality recording by a photojournalist has confirmed significant structural changes to RPC-666, likely as a result of the damage sustained in the July 9, 2004 engagement. A sizable crater in the plating two meters behind the cockpit, half covering the passenger door of an MI-24, has been filled with flesh and fused bone. Several dozen decomposed hands grasp the edges of the hole. Regenerative has been added to the RPC-666 hazard list.